So, the renewing of our mind is going to help us. According to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. The renewing of our mind. Mind must be renewed. When we read the Bible, our mind must be renewed. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? God transforms our mind through his word. When we meditate on his scriptures, it changes us. When we listen to the devil, he binds us. When we listen to the lies, we become slaves. When we listen to the truth, we become free. Yes, shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall know the lies and the lies will keep you slaves. You shall listen to the truth and it will set you free. You shall listen to the lies and the lies will make you slaves. So whatever you listen, it impacts your mind. Because the God of this world has blinded their mind. The devil is after your mind. The devil is after your mind. And God is after your mind. Too. That's why he requires you to meditate on his scriptures. That's why he requires of you to meditate on his scriptures every day. So when you meditate on the scriptures, your mind gets transformed. When you meditate on life, you become a slave. When you meditate on his, his works, you, be, you, you, you become a worshiper. But when you meditate on problems, you become the slave. It depends on one place in your mind. Then you become. When you read the chapter 15, the Bible says, You have been clean, cleansed by the words that I've spoken to you. I've spoken. I've spoken to you. And you are clean. My God. By speaking, you become clean. As I speak to you, I am cleaning you. by speaking to you Jesus makes you clean by speaking that means I can make you dirty yeah. are you getting it? in salvation we speak the word and you believe it and you confess it and you become born again you believe it and you get uh, righteousness you become righteous when I speak you believe it you confess it and you become saved when you receive it you become righteous are you getting it? So when Jesus is saying 
By the words that I have spoken to you, you have been cleansed. My God, my God. By saying words, you can be holy. By saying words, you can be healed. By saying words, you can be delivered. By saying words, a change can become. But the same words from the same mouth, you can be dirty. But the same mouth, I can make you a slave. By the same mouth, I can make you dead. Dead. Are you getting it? It is very important to understand the power that comes from my mouth. Because this is where salvation starts. By preaching, by confessing, by believing. That's where salvation takes place. It starts in the world. When I speak and you believe and you receive and you become born again when I teach you the word you become clean because you were dirty you were evil are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So it is easy. Jesus is saying, You have been cleansed by the words that I've spoken to you. Just imagine if you can be cleansed by the word, you can be dirty through words. Jesus said to his disciples and people around, It is not what you eat that makes you dirty. It is not because of you've eaten without cleansing your hands that makes you dirty. It is the words that come from your mouth that makes you dirty. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You said to us, we have been cleansed by the words that come from your mouth. Oh, if somebody come and speak to me and gossip he makes me dirty. He makes me dirty. If somebody swears in my ears, he makes me dirty. I can be cleansed by the things, the words that are spoken. I can be dirty through the words that are spoken. God is saying in Isaiah chapter 6. Who shall go for me? Who must I send? And Isaiah says. It is I my Lord. But I am undone. Because I sit amongst people who are dirty. I have a dirty lips. Because of the people that I am sitting around. I want to go, but I am dirty because of the environment that I'm living under. Sometimes you can become what your environment is. And 
It determines for you who you are. That's why Paul said according to Romans chapter 12 verse 2. By the renewing of the stage of your mind. So the stage of the mind, the condition of the mind, the environment of the mind. In other words, to change your mind, I must change your environment. Now you have cleansed by the words that I've spoken to you. The condition of the mind must be changed through the. In other words, your mind can be conditioned. When people want to sell you something, they advertise it and they tell you the need for it. And then you look how, how it's going to help to make your life easy. And you have a desire. When you have a desire, then you want to buy it. They created a condition for you. And your mind buys it. Are you getting it? So, the conditioning of your mind, this environment, the condition, makes your mind to be a slave. If you want to be free, if you want to be bound, put a condition. I am poor because I live amongst poor people. I am sick because I live among sick people. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So, what if I renewing of your mind? You can be better. Mm. In other words, as I speak, I affect your mind. As you meditate on the scriptures, as you hear what I'm saying, you become a new person because of the words that I'm speaking. The words that I'm speaking, they can ease your burden. They can set you free. They can make you bound. They can make you a slave. And they can heal you. And they can heal you and deliver you. Are you getting it? Do you know how powerful is your tongue? In other words, when I gossip, I make you dirty. No. No. <laughs> When I tell you the good news, I cleanse you. I, 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 I you. When I tell you the bad news, I make you dead. I marry you. I make you sorrowful. When I tell you about the good things, I make you happy. Do you hear this? What makes you all this? It's the tongue. The tongue. It cleanses you. The tongue. It cleanses you. The tongue. It makes you see. The tongue. It, make, it heals you. Do you hear Tongue alone. When you confess with your mouth, you confess with your tongue. Your, your life was. You believe with your mouth. And you were 
saved when Russia saved. Do you hear this? In other words, your tongue played a huge role. It plays a huge role in your salvation. Your salvation. Because when you, you when you testify, when you testify, you wrap up the old old and you want people to see the new things in you. When you testify, say that they, they will expect Christ. Because you are expecting them, they must see new things. Are you getting it? So when you say you are born again and you give testimony, then people are ready to see something new. But when you don't testify, they will not know that you are born again. It will take long for them to understand your behavior. Because you haven't said it, you haven't testified. Are you getting it? But when you testify and you tell them Jesus has cleansed my life. Now I'm born again. I'm spirit filled. And they will wait to see that in your life. The, you use your tongue to clean your old life. To tell them how you are now. You are a born again Christian. You testify. You live the life. The, you show the lifestyle. That you are a brand new person. The old one was lying. The old one is dead. But now you are a born again believer. Are you getting it? You are a born again. So in other words, the way you speak is the way you cleanse your life. Do you understand how powerful is your time? To make you dirty. Let me repeat. When I gossip, I make you dirty. When I testify, I make you happy. If a person comes and gossip and tell you stories, you must know that that person is mere you with that mud. When a, 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 a gossiping person it means that this person is dead. Already makes you dirty like him so that you will join her by agreeing with this person. In other words, you're opening a bin, a rubbish bin, so that it can throw all the rubbish that is inside that rubbish bin. When you open yours, you receive and share the debt with this person. The power of the tongue. It can make you dirty. It can cleanse you. It can make you sick. It can heal you. It can bind you. It can uh, the it can free you. The tongue. Do you hear this? Let's go to the book of James so that you can see how the tongue is. Says for you. chapter 3. Are you there? In the book of James, chapter 3. Let's read. Be not many of you teachers, knowing that we shall receive heavier judgment. Verse 1. Okay. Asifunde ingwa diga jagobe uisatlugo sestatu u verse 1. Ngoguba sonke siyakubeka O ninga binga bafundisi nga bafundisi abaningi bazalwane bami. Nazuguti siyagwamgeli swa ugwashulelwa ugukulu. 
In other words, let us not have many teachers. As I am teaching, let not anyone come with his or her doctrine beside the doctrine that I'm teaching you. Are you getting it? Le, 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 because if we have many teachers, the church will be divided. Because that one comes with his revelation and that one comes with his revelation. Then we will receive a heavier judgment. Verse 2 For in many things we all stumble If any, if any stumble Stumbled not in words The same is a perfect man Able to bridle the whole body also Verse 2 Ngoguba songkesi ya kubega ngogu ningi Uma umuntu enga kubegi ngazwe Lowo uyindota epeleleyo Ena mandla Ogubamba no mzimba wonke gungati ngetomu In other words We might stumble Because of things that are happening But if one is not a stumble that one is a perfect man. If you, you are not stumbled by words, you are a perfect man. So we easily get offended by anything people they speak. Where is that? Do you hear this? We all get stumbled. Are you with me, church? It is very important for us to become a perfect man. Because when we stumble, it shows our weakness. We get offended easily by what people are saying. Just imagine somebody in the taxi offends me. Or when I'm driving to church, somebody offends me. As I come inside to the church, I can't worship because I was offended by somebody. But the Bible says if you are not easily stumbling then you are a perfect man. You are a perfect man. How many of us are perfect? I don't mean perfect but I don't mean you don't but but the matter that you are matured but you won't offend by the words that are saying yet you are bold yourself, so that you will reach because if you stumble, that means you are a child you are not a perfect man. If a person will tease you, and then you will While we are worshiping, we are th thinking about the presence. You can't even worship. God. You are offended. You have stumbled. You have stumbled by something that someone has spoken to you. But the Bible says if a person is not being stumbled by any word, that person can be you are bad, you won't even um, see um, the um, um, And you will just um, um, Because you know that that person doesn't have a key to open the heaven. That is why I say mind your own business. Because you will you, know you, know you, know you, you won't reach heaven. If you will there are people who be with you with who want to make you friendly. If they easily, then they will do it more. Whether they have spoken or not, you need to continue embarking Whether they have heard it or not, you need to embark We wouldn't be preaching Because they speak Sometimes they speak. But to people, they 
ask you, did you hurt? No. I will preach in season. I'm waiting for the work that God has given me. I want to stop praying just because I want to stop praying. That is where I am. I have mouth to speak. I also have mouth to speak. You won't shut my mouth as I didn't shut yours. Do you hear me, brother? As I hear the word of God, it is clear to me. When I hear the insults, it defiles me. When I hear lies, it binds me. When I hear the truth, it liberates me. Everything that I hear, it does something to me. There's nothing that I hear that does nothing to me. Nothing that I hear that does nothing to me. Whatever that I hear, it me. if I hear lies, it's binding. When I hear truth, it's free me. When I hear lies, it's When I hear death, it's poison. When I hear poison, it's making me sick. When I hear poison, it's making me sick. When I hear Joy, Young it heals me. I cannot I cannot anything. Anything. I cannot anything. Anything. and I want to live. Because whatever that you speak, in a man, it have power. Whether I've prayed or not, but the tongue have power. That is why that whatever that I speak, it shall come to pass. I don't need to shout or say it repeatedly. But when I say come out of her, then the demon comes out. When I say I pray, yet it is bound. When I say I heal you, peel. then you be Man, shown you When I say I you, bless, you are shown I don't need to say Man, it seven you times. Once I say it once, you know. this thing leaves you. Know. And then it will you know. do the work. God say, once I you stand my way, I, I wait. It won't come back to you know. me. I am like you. Know. Whatever I speak, I speak like you. Know. When I speak, I speak I know how to sow. And I know I know how to I know how to say I speak while I'm in the dance and speak things and things will come to pass when I worship him he resides on my worship I cannot open my mouth and nothing will happen whenever I open my mouth something by step place Elijah calls the fire to come down I can call power to come down I can call glory to come down from heaven. When I worship Him, I rely on my worship. Whatever that I speak with my mouth, something will happen. It cannot happen as much as it happens. When the wishes and dreams come to pass, and then me as an open heaven, when I speak, nothing will happen. What is this? The tongue. 